Trail runner, rear kitchen with a super slide, private front bedroom here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan, coming in on trade. And we're gonna get this right out of the way. This is not a spring chicken. This is a handyman special. Handyman special. <laughs> So you can see that it's got a rear kitchen, it's got big countertops and cabinets, etc. Like, you can see that. I don't need to spend time talking about that. I'm going to spend time talking about the stuff you really want to know, like, why am I calling this a handyman special? So, this was owned by some people who I think really did their best to take care of it, but uh, there was just a couple things that got beyond their control, and a couple things were they didn't realize the extent of a few of the problems that exist on this RV and they just decided it's getting past our ability, let's just swap out of this thing. Unfortunately, it got a little too far gone. So, major stuff. It's, it doesn't, it hasn't had a leak, it has a leak. A current one, a pretty significant one at that. Um, the, uh, the wall panel up here, when we first saw this trailer a month ago when we were looking at it on trade, I detected uh, a soft spot up here where this wall paneling was spongy. Weirdly, this is a this is an odd RV. Trail runners are not built like this today, nor were they usually built. This has aluminum framed sidewall construction. It's really weird. You don't tend to find a lot of trailers like this that have that, but that is the case right here. So you've got a case of all this wall paneling up here has soaked water because unfortunately the slide is not going all the way out right now it needs some kind of adjustment or the wall has absorbed so much water that it has warped or something but the fact is it's got this major problem right here and uh during that time i guess somebody couldn't keep their fingers off it and decided to like rip some of the wall paneling off trying to figure out how bad it was or whatever so unfortunately that is leaking it has leaked this way run down the floor and the whole RV definitely needs a cleaning. I mean, let's that's obvious, right? But as we get up here, it's solid right here. Then the moment my feet go to this point, you can see it's just, there's, there's nothing there. There's none of that flooring left. Now, if we follow that trail of water, it has wicked its way up here through the bathroom floor. The previous owners, uh, I think maybe they knew they were getting rid of it. I'm not sure. They just put this piece of particle board down on the floor. We've had a lot of rain recently. You can see how that water has acti actively osmosed and wicked up into that particle board. Then if we go forward a little bit further, up here into the bedroom, you can see more of the same thing has happened. And they did the same thing. They put some particle board down. Now, this was from last winter. They had a cold crack. It's a bummer. It happened. But, I mean, that could have happened to anybody no matter how well you take care of your RV. Over here, notice that I'm just, I'm hitting on the stuff that, you know, the, the bad news so that you know what you're getting into, guys. I'm not going to hide stuff. This right here looks spooky, but actually, that isn't a leak. This is from heat expansion and contraction, causing that wall board to, to breathe, basically, and it has bowed out as the weather's gotten warmer. Um, this is leftover linoleum flooring. If we go back here into the living area... All of the, what looks like wood print flooring here, they put all of that down in place of, well, I don't remember what was there originally, and you can see how they put a little tack trim line down around the original carpeted area. Um, what else was there? Oh, a couple holes where some ice got in. So, that's happened historically. I don't know if Johnny Thimblemouse is still making residence here in this RV or not, but you deserve to know that he has. So, we have gone, let's see, we've spent almost four minutes telling you what is not right with the RV? Uh, hope you appreciate that, first of all, that we don't try to hide this stuff. If I drove from four hours away on an RV I was told was in good shape and then found something like this, I know that I would be livid, and I expect you to be absolutely no different. So we respect you more than that. So, if those are disqualifying factors for you, I totally get it. I spend my money, and I earn my money, just like you, a dollar at a time, and I don't give it up easily. I expect to have something fair in return. If you appreciate that, and this is a, like, the problems we've looked at, if you're like, nope, I won't buy this RV as a result, no sweat, take a look at something else we have at Halet RV and know that we obviously shoot you straight. Now, if, for the right money, you're like, hey, I'm a handy person, I'm a carpenter, I could fix and flip this thing, well, then let's see what else we got. Because... There is some potential here. If, if you get that leak addressed, you replace some paneling, 
I think there's some potential here. We've got a lot of cabinet space. We've got a ton of countertop prep space back there. Uh, the uh, chairs and the window here, these are things that people look for like crazy in RVs to give you good campsite visibility. Um, there's all sorts of storage. I mean, it's not a bad trailer. It's just had unfortunate history. And I won't gloss over that. Hey, there's another little Johnny Thimble Mouse hole right in the side of that couch right there where they must have uh, got themselves some, uh, you know, insulation. <laughs> All right, so a better look back up here in the bedroom and bathroom, then we'll hop outside. They replaced their original mattress. You can see that is a, uh, a residential replacement bed there. Other than that makeshift walk the plank over here, we've got a pretty normal front bedroom, wide open side stands, but dual hanging closets as well, kind of the best of both worlds. Nice little touch, a little radius work on that closet right there is a handy little thing so you don't roll over and jab your arm. Um, spin it around, it's something of a transitional bathroom. This was made bef like after split bathrooms uh, were starting to phase out, but before full private bathrooms had really taken over. And of course, over here, we already kind of poked our heads in the main bath area, but just to give you a, one more look before we jump outside, in case you're curious, you might see a hole up there and think, oh my god, another mouse. You see another hole up there. They actually had a piece of coax at one point running through there to be able to operate a TV here in the bedroom. Oh crap, something else I forgot. It has had a front corner roof seam leak up here as well as you can clearly see. And at a glance, the exterior looks all right. Like the exterior looks like it could use a little hose off, but obviously the RV has needed a little more than that. Um, something else I noticed while I was out here, I'm wondering if this baggage door or something got left open in the rain. Like, I can see that this contact paper is a little warbly, but it's actually pretty solid under there. So, I'm not sure what might have caused that right there. Um, it looks like, over the years, uh, there was definitely an attempt to really keep on top of this. And I think, like I said, I don't know if that slide out got out of adjustment. It might just, the slide just might need adjusted because there's an aluminum structure under it. So, it stands to reason that you'd be able to put this thing back together because the wall looks to be on a level plane. Um, but obviously the top of the slide isn't making contact, which is where that water penetration is coming from. Uh, the tires look okay. They've had tire covers on them, but the RV has sat in one spot and they are getting a little old. So the tires are probably aged off. You can see how they put a uh, Max Air vent cover over the top of this thing as well. Um, the uh, roof, like I said, you can kind of see from the edge of it here if you know what you're looking at. They put a, uh, a coating on it. Some people will do a wash and conditioner on their RV roof membranes. Some people will do a, a coating, kind of like in a, in a big city, how they have that like tar stuff that they brush on the roof, kind of what this RV has had here. But like I said, at a glance on the outside, it doesn't look terrible. <laughs> um, and really, overall, even things like the decals have actually held up fairly well. It's just... There's a lot going on inside of it after that water penetrated through. And here's a quick look at the tires. Like I said, they look good. The RV has been parked most of its life. It hasn't been towed. But I believe those tires are probably about aged off. And I don't know what wacky foreign manufacturer made those tires. But um, just knowing when this RV was built and the kind of tires that were often used on a budget camper like this in the RV industry at the time makes me think those should probably be changed if you plan on towing it. So again, if you're a fix it and flip it type person, I think there's potential here. If you're a first time RVer, I don't think this is your camper. And I think that we've demonstrated that pretty clearly. But the good news, we've only got about 500 other options for you to take a look at. New, used, everything, you know. So uh, whether it's hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivery and everything between, including shooting you straight. We do it at Halet RV. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.